This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Justin Strong and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Justin Strong. Joining me each week is the other host of the show, and he is more than Knuff, Ryan Nelson. Justin, I actually hope this podcast is enough for all the Barbie fans out there. <laughs> That's right. We, I don't want them to tell us to beat you off. That's right. Don't tell us to beat you off. At least we hope you don't. Anyway, so uh, if you've been listening to the podcast since we started the podcast last year, thank you for continuing to listen and making us a part of your day. If you're new to the show, we hope you enjoyed as we talk about the biggest movie of 2023, four months after it released, Barbie. <laughs> uh, if you are new or irregular and would like more access to the show, visit our Patreon page and become a patron of the Main Attraction Podcast. Go to patreon.com slash the main attraction podcast you can get patreon only content you can support us at a three five ten or twenty dollar level when you join up we'll shout you out here on the show if you want ad free access to the podcast any level of being a patreon supporter will get to the show ad free does not matter which level you sign up for you can sign up for as low as the three dollar level as high as the twenty dollar level all four levels will get you the show ad free just by signing up and going on and lot listening to us on the patreon app if you would like bonus content though the five the ten the twenty dollar levels we got you covered there so we do have some additional bonus content for you as well if you are interested in that now if you can't be a patron though we would love for you to still help us and you can do so by going to spotify and apple podcast and giving us a five star rating on both of those platforms if you have time, we would love it if you wrote us a review while you're on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we'd love for you to do so. It helps us out a lot just by getting the podcast into the new, uh, to the ears of new listeners. So just go over to Spotify, go over to Apple Podcasts, and rate us on those two on those two platforms. If you listen to us on another platform and you can rate us there, we would love for you to rate us there too. But those are the only two that I'm aware of that allow you to rate. So. Uh, but if you want to interact with us, we'd love for you to do so. You can go to your email. Uh, you can send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. We would love for you to send us any thoughts, any questions, any comments, any suggestions you might have. We would love to uh, hear those. So just go to your email and send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. Se dermos as mãos, quem irá sacar as armas? Sabe quem disse isso? Foi o Bob Marley. Ele é muito mais do que um cantor. Sua história é incrível. E agora você vai poder saber mais sobre ele. Dia 12 de fevereiro estreia o filme Bob Marley One Love. A história por trás do ídolo. Exclusivamente nos cinemas. Não perca. All right, so like I said, this is the biggest movie of the year. How much did this thing bring in by the now? I don't even know how oh, much. It's God, is it two dude, billion? I yeah, I don't even know. Uh, it's, it's a whole bunch. That's all I know. So, uh, yeah. uh, anyways, so we we are getting to it. Uh, we just are now covering because I have just now seen it. Uh, it took me a while. We'll get into that a little bit later on about why it took me so long to get in uh, to finally get a chance to see it. But just because yeah, this it, is showing a billion and a half. Billion and a half. Okay, so I, I figured it was if I didn't had. If it hadn't gotten to two billion, I figured it was getting pretty darn close. The, uh, the only thing that's even close to it right now is the Super Mario Brothers movie. So, uh, so like I said, that's kind of where we are. Uh, but uh, look, like I said, we'll talk about more while we're, uh, while we're just now covering. But I did want us to cover it because I finally have seen it. Uh, it is the biggest movie of the year, and I just want us. Look, I don't know how many people are going to listen to this because it has been four months later. So if you're one of those that's like, hey, I'd love to come back and listen to something about Barbie, we got you covered. But. Uh, it's like I said. Well, just you go ahead and uh, give us your overall general thoughts on the film, and I'll give you mine. I love this movie. This is the second time I've seen it. I saw it at the theater, which was just an absolute incredible experience. Watched it last night. Loved it just as much. Bravo, Greta Gerwig. Bravo, <laughs> Margot Robbie. This movie is unbelievable. How good it is. Yeah, it's really good. The people who complained about this can beach off because there's <laughs> nothing the, the complaints were stupid this movie is innovative it's it's funny yeah it is what we've been talking about we, we were talking about being burned out on superhero stuff here's ip that they took that hasn't been used and just made the most creative and fun movie to come around in a long time yeah uh Look, I'm with you. I think it's really, really good. Uh, there are parts of it that I've struggled with a little bit, but for the most part, I really, really enjoyed this film. Look, it, to me, it's a fascinating film. Uh, I'll just go ahead and take mm -hmm. this much right now. Just one, because one, I didn't, I had no idea what to, uh, to expect. I had no idea what to expect from a Barbie movie. I had, I had no idea. But 
watching it, uh, it's it it made me just really fascinated just to dissect this film just because uh, I'm, I was a sociology major in, in, in Mississippi State. That's where I got my degree in. Uh, I have actually, you know, the, we actually just in terms of like when we start talking about cultural things, I took a couple of cultural anthropology classes. Uh, Barbie actually is comes up in a couple of those classes just because of uh, the cultural dynamics that it has and the cultural impact that it has. Uh, just it did things that no other toy had ever done. So, like I said, I was fascinated by this film. I was completely fascinated. It is, it is really, really funny. So there's that as well. So, uh, didn't have any first clue what to expect. Came into it completely blind. Uh, I'd heard, you know, the people. I'd heard a lot of the complaints because look, when it came out and people were talking about it, it was. I mean, it was hard. It'd be hard to avoid some of the just the talking points of it. But and if you're wondering, let's go ahead and just talk about this real quick. If you're wondering why I'm just now seeing it, look. When it came out, it came out the same time as Oppenheimer, and I, I'm short on time. Even in during the summer, even though I'm a teacher during the summer, I still am short on time because me and my son we travel all over the place for him to play golf. Uh, so finding time to even make it to the theater is difficult. So I had to make a choice: do I want to go see Oppenheimer or do I want to go see Barbie? And if you've listened to this podcast long enough, I have talked repeatedly about how Christopher Nolan is like the one director who will get me to the theater every single time. So I was going to go see Oppenheimer. That's why we discussed Oppenheimer uh, back in the summer. So this is why we're just now getting to it. Uh, I went ahead and watched it this uh, this past week. Tuesday, I think, of this week. Uh, I was I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep. I don't know what it was. It's one of those frustrating things when you're sitting in bed and you can't sleep. The thing you will do is you're just sitting there. So after about an hour, I finally got up and I went into uh, the living room. I was like, I'm let me find something to watch and barbie was on sale it was on sale for 13 dollars on prime v it's like okay finally this it's not 30 bucks uh so i'll go ahead and purchase it and uh end up watching and absolutely loving it so uh now, have your have your wife and daughter watched it not yet um uh, with I, I hope to watch it with them here, here soon but we have not had a chance okay. to watch it so uh it's just been it's just been a kind of a crazy week so uh, but I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Uh, like I said, there are some parts of it that were difficult for me, but we'll talk more about those here in just a little bit. So let's just, just kind of get into this real quick. What did you think? Did you, what were your expectations of this coming into it? Did you have expectations? What, what did you? What were you thinking coming That's into it? That's a good question. I didn't know where it was going. I knew it was a comedy about right. Barbie. It looked funny. Yeah. But I had no idea where the plot was going or anything right. like that. I didn't know how well they were going to use music. Right, mm -hmm. you know, I'd heard Ron Gosling was very funny. Yeah, you know, but uh, but then like like a character like Alan, I had no expectations for. Right. He blew me away. Also, I didn't realize how involved Margot Robbie was into right. getting this movie made. So bravo to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she uh, she plays a big a big role in getting this thing uh, getting this thing made, getting it to the screen. So yeah, like you said, uh, bravo for her. Uh, like I said. When I heard there's going to be a Barbie movie, I'll be real honest with you, I, I didn't have, I thought it's going to be just an oh, IP. Yeah. It's just going to be an IP film yep. that's going to be kind of dumb, probably not great. But then I heard that Greta Gerwig was doing it. Yeah. And that changes things because Greta Gerwig, she does thoughtful, interesting mm -hmm. things. Now, Greta Gerwig can do some weird things too. Uh, and like I said, I really didn't know what to expect because like Greta Gerwig does, did a movie that I'm absolutely love and I think is really, really good. And that is the 2019 version of Little Women. She she did yeah. that. And it was, I mean, did you ever see that? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic film. Absolutely fantastic. She also, though, did, uh, and I don't know, she didn't direct it or anything, but she was still very much an integral part of a movie that I saw that I did not like at all, and that is White Noise that both you and I well, saw. Well, that was, that was her partner, yeah. you know, about Long Well, and that's, what, I'll be honest, when I first turned this on and they start doing the pre, uh, the, the, the credits at the beginning of this thing, I see, uh, Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach either help write or produce or something yeah, like that. And I yeah, got a little yeah. concerned. I'm not going to lie to you. It's like, yeah. oh no, what are we doing here? Uh, but thankfully, it, it has some of those like weird elements to it. And that's and those are the parts where I kind of bumped up against it a little bit. So I was like, I really don't know what to do with some of this stuff. But for the most part, though, I really enjoyed this film. Uh, what really got me interested, what made me think, okay, well, maybe this thing is going to be good when coming into it uh, before I ever saw the film or anything like that. The teaser trailer that they released, I don't remember when they released it, but this is what actually kind of piqued my interest in it. Actually, it's like the very opening of the movie. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was yeah, really yeah. surprised by this because it's, it's, it is a straight beat for beat 
just cut of the like opening two minutes of the film where they're doing the yeah. the 2001 riff with all the girls playing with the baby dolls and yeah, yeah. and the giant Barbie that they start smashing their dolls. Uh, so like I said, I was really surprised that that was actually part of the movie. What do you think? Yeah, that was that was really good. And Helen Marin just a perfect narrator. Yeah, she of this is. Film. Yeah, she is. She's absolutely a perfect narrator. Uh, which. Like I said, I didn't know if it was going to have narration, and I didn't know any of all that, but it's just absolutely fantastic. So, uh, But what's interesting about this film, like I said, because it opens up, and it starts, and it, honestly, it kind of starts the way that I expected it to be. I expected it to just be about the Barbie toy. I mean, that's because that's yeah. what they're doing here at the beginning of this thing. They're just giving us Barbie land. Uh, there's all these Barbies. There's all these Kens. Uh, and they're introducing us to the world. You know, the Barbies, they don't, their, their feet stay in high heel pose the entire time. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, they're giving us all this stuff that you, I just kind of expected, but the moment when they're at the party, uh, the moment when they're at the party and she says, Something along the lines of, did anybody think about dying or anything like that yeah, today? Yeah. That's when it decides, that's when you know that they're going to be doing something a little bit different and something that I'd never expected from a movie about toys. Yeah, it was definitely surprising. I thought also, this was where you're starting to see Ryan Gosling is like, uh, you know, he's not enough. Right, yeah. Like, he, you see he is like having like issues of trying to get her attention. Right. And, uh, it's I think like he's struggling. So yeah, you were like, okay, this is going to be different than you're expecting. Yeah, it really was. Uh, Cause like I said, I just came expecting a movie about toys and I didn't, I honestly, I didn't know how I figured it would be Barbie going into the real world, which it is, but it's more yeah. than just Barbie going into the real world. Oh, so, yeah. um, but they're obviously talking about uh, the big thing about that they do in this film, which is surprising that they can do this. But I shouldn't have been because I know the history behind Barbie. They talk a lot about you know gender roles, gender uh, gender politics, and things like this. And as much as it focuses on gender, I don't think it's necessarily a, completely about gender. I think it's just about right. humans and just where we fit in in general. Because look. There are things that they talk about that I don't think is just necessarily something that just women struggle with. I think there's a lot of things that just people in general struggle with. The desire to want to be loved, the desire to want to yeah. uh, fit in, to the, be enough, to be in, yeah, to to just simply be enough on uh, for who who you are and what you are. That stuff, like I said, it really uh, it really does a good job of. Of showing that, and like I said, because look, we're two guys on this film podcast yeah. talking about a, a, a movie that is honestly it, look. I don't think it is just for women or just for girls, but I don't it's think a, so at all. but it is. I think that is obviously the 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 target yeah. demographic. I don't. I, there's no question about that right. for sure. But it also does a good job of like, hey, how about we treat everybody with some respect and, right. and try to listen to each other, right? And that's the that's the big thing about this film is they want people to understand what. You know, this is something that the Barbies and the Kins, you know, the Kins are, but it's just because what it is, it's supposed to be satire is, you know, the Barbies live in a world where women run everything, where the Barbies run everything, they have all the power, and the Kins are just trying to do their best to get some of that and try, try to just like get the attention of the Barbies. And the opposite is true here in our world, in the real world, where it's, you know, the men have all the power, they have all the influence, and women, you know, are just, they're doing their best they can to try to get just get their foot on the same floor and so like yeah. that, that satire and that just that the way that they balance that is just really interesting especially when they get to to the end of this thing uh yeah and i thought man the the scene where where ken ron gosling's ken figures out about the patriarchy yes and how men run, men run the world run. yes that was it fantastic just hysterical and if you're one of these like low testosterone guys that were offended by that. I mean, I don't, dude. Wake up, man! Throw some water in your face. Something's look, wrong. This is movie was always going to it, look. This movie is always going to be difficult for some people um, because the. I mean, the point of the toy of Barbie. The point of the toy is was to show little girls that they could be anything. That's the point of the right, toy. Right. And so when you make a movie about a toy that is trying to show little girls that they can do anything and be anything that they want. Uh, they can ac they can accomplish those things. There's going to be a certain section of, of society that doesn't appreciate that, that doesn't want that, uh, because there's uh, look in a set the part of the world that we live in. We live in the deep south. 
Uh, well, this is not the norm, uh, and it's not the it's not what most people think. There is still a decent section of our uh, the part of the country that we live in that believes that women working outside the home is wrong, and women shouldn't right. do anything besides be a mom and raise kids. Like I said, it's not the norm. Uh, I know that a lot of people think that may be the norm in, in the South. It's not, but it's more prevalent throughout our part of the country than it is throughout any other part of the country. So there's going to be a lot of people who are going to struggle with this film just because it's looking at, uh, this toy. And look, this is a compli. What's this is why, this is why I get fascinated by this movie because they deal with the complicated legacy of Barbie in this because the, the leg, the legacy of Barbie is yes, it is trying to show girls that they can, Girls of all races and all creeds and all and all sections of society is trying. The, the toy itself is trying to tell you, tell girls, hey, you can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to. Do. You want to be the president, you can be the president. You want to be the Supreme Court, you can be on the Supreme Court. You want to be a doctor, you can be a doctor. That's what the legacy of the toy is. But the problem is, the toy also, you know, uh, re-strengthened or whatever. I'm not sure what the word I'm looking for is. Uh, it really backed up. You know, really horrible like body stereotypes for women, and because mm-hmm. you know the Barbie doll is tall, long legs, tiny, tiny little waist, big chest, right? Uh, right. You know, serious body image. That's basically saying this is what girls should look like, and this is what women should look like. So it's got a complicated legacy. And when I realized that they were actually going to kind of deal with that complicated legacy, that just fascinating because like i said in yeah. some of the my classes that i took in in college my cultural and anthropology classes this comes up and this is some of the things that we talk about we talk about gender politics gender identity and the barbie doll had a very complicated they had left a complicated mark on society when it was introduced for those reasons yeah and i you know i hate to give mattel too many props because they're going to make about 30 billion off this <laughs> <laughs> but Shout out to them for allowing Greta Gerwig to make fun of them yeah. and to, you know, to destruct this, you know, construct this this legacy and, and the issues. And really, the, the young girls played perfectly uh, by Ariana Green Grum- Black. Greenblatt. Yeah. Uh, she was like just tearing Barbie apart. Oh, yeah, she was. You know, that was, you know, that was just great to watch. And, uh, you know, it was fa- that was one of the things that's really fascinating. It's like they they went there. Yeah, they did. Uh, tell you what, let's go ahead and take a real quick break, and then we're gonna come back and talk more specifics about some of the places that they do go with this. Se dermos as mãos, quem irá sacar as armas? Sabe quem disse isso? Foi o Bob Marley. Ele é muito mais do que um cantor. Sua história é incrível. E agora você vai poder saber mais sobre ele. Dia 12 de fevereiro estreia o filme Bob Marley One Love. A história por trás do ídolo. Exclusivamente nos cinemas. Não perca. All right, so like I said, let's get, just, just kind of get into some of those specifics because you, you bring up another point that I was really surprised by because Mattel doesn't look bad in this, uh, the, right. but they don't look great in this either just because right. you've got a a boardroom full of nothing but men who are trying to decide you know, how best to market toys aimed specifically at girls and how they can use those and how they can profit off of that and how they can uh, just profit off of that in general. Like I said, they don't look great in this. Uh, they, they don't yeah. look bad. And like I said, they, they're, they're pretty soft on them as it, as the movie winds up because Will Ferrell's character, who is supposed to be playing the president, I don't even know if he has an actual name in this. Um, yeah, he was really, really funny. Yes, he was. It was he's Yeah, he's just the CEO of Mattel. He's perfect for the role that, that they is. cast him for, just as this kind of clueless CEO who, who somehow found his way into... Uh, found his way into this role and is making just hand money hand over fist and, and him screaming stuff like find that doll yes never not funny never not, never funny. not funny uh the, look the parts that I, the parts of it that made me kind of bump up against it and the parts that I, I struggle with like when they're running through the the Mattel headquarters when it gets when it starts to be just kind of weird when it really kind of leans into the weirdness of it that's when I started to kind of struggle a little bit because that those didn't always just work for me but when they were but when they're really like digging into some of the some of the stereotypes and some of the uh 
some of the gender politics and some of the some of the just the human politics and just uh, identity questions. Those things just really really worked for me. Like I said, some of the just yeah. the weird stuff it, it didn't always. Now, now give me some examples. Of the like I said, stuff. the the weird stuff like when they were running through the the Mattel headquarters. Like I, I really that just didn't work for me. Uh, I thought they sometimes spent a little bit too much time doing like the going through, like we're on the boat, we're on the jet ski, we're on. All that See, I thought stuff. that was funny. I thought it was funny too, but they kept doing it, and I, I, it got old for me a little after a while. I, like I said, the very first time I thought it was great, and then like the second yeah. time I thought it was great. Then they got Will Ferrell and all his people like, okay, we we, we get it. <laughs> so, like I said, it just kind of wore on me, but uh, but like I said, I was fascinated by all the rest of the stuff. Um, I was also really fascinated just by how quickly things changed in barbie land so yeah and look ryan gosling to me look margot robbie this is margot robbie's film she's the star there's no question about that and like i said it's very much true that you know it's barbie and ken uh it's the, yeah it's it's very much the barbie story but ryan gosling and all of the kins they're the ones who truly make this thing work in terms of what they're trying to accomplish because if you don't get ryan now, gosling hold up, now. Hold on. I agree. Okay, keep on, keep on. Because if the, if he doesn't go into the the whole, we're going to go into the patriarchy and we're going to go back to to. Oh yeah, yeah. If they don't do that part of this, this film doesn't work. It it just it's just a it's just a fluffy, just standard fun kind of funny movie. Because like I said, that gives it meaning. That gives it its purpose because it yeah, makes it. You say that, but when the Barbies and America Ferreira and Ariana Greenblatt's character come in to overtake the patriarchy, that's where the movie like really goes to another level. Yeah, but like I said, the, but you can't have that unless they decide to even Yeah, tackle I just don't want to give the Kins too much credit on here. Well, no. I mean, like I said, but it's the fact that they're willing to dissect it. That's what makes this yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what makes this thing just really really work for it. Uh because I didn't expect you know, I heard people say they mentioned the patriarchy a whole lot and I didn't really know what they meant by it. Really? But they really did. it was that was overblown. Yeah, the, and like I said, it, it was it only a handful, and it was funny, like the scene where they're all singing like Matchbox Twenty to like a girl, right? Like that's that stuff happens. Oh yeah, and like I said, look, I loved look I, that song is my favorite song, so I was like rocking along yeah. with it. Yeah, uh, but it, it's just like they understand the they understand the subject matter, and like I said, yeah. by going to that place, it elevates this film to a, a point where it, I just yeah. did not expect it to be because like I said otherwise it's just a fluffy film and there's nothing wrong yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. there's nothing wrong with it being just a fluffy film there's nothing wrong if they decided to, to do that it would have been great because there would have been a ton of there would have been a ton of women uh, adult women uh, children there would have been a ton that would have just loved to see it just because they grew up with Barbies and yeah. played with Barbies but the fact that they decided to do something a little bit deeper and go a little bit and they dissect some things uh, by using Ken for that reason because otherwise and that's another thing I, that because Ken has no purpose if he, in this film if, if they right, don't do right, that right. and that's right, what's right. great about this because look obviously I'm uh, you know you and I didn't have Barbies growing up Right. But I honestly don't know why they even make kings. I don't know a single girl who had a Ken doll. Did, did you know any growing up? Uh, you know, my sister, I believe, had a Ken doll, but I can't remember. That was a long, long time ago. But, I mean, it was just, he was just there. Yeah, he's just there. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, like I said, my cousin was the only person, uh, was the only girl that spent a ton of time around uh, outside of yeah. like, school and stuff. Uh, and she had Barbie dolls. I don't remember her ever having a Ken doll. I could be wrong about that. I remember her having uh, Barbie dolls. I remember she had tons of Barbie yeah. dolls. Uh, I don't remember if she ever had any Ken dolls. And she did. That She didn't really do anything with them. So, uh but like I said, they understand that because, again, if they don't do this with Ken, if they don't bring Ken along, if they don't let him discover the patriarchy, then this movie is just a fluffy, yeah. fluffy movie. And so, right. and like I said, nothing wrong with having a fluffy movie. Those are fun. Uh, they can be. But it just it elevates the, the film to just a completely well, different level. <laughs> And this is why this movie's probably going to win an Oscar, you know, for different or and be nominated for Oscar. We're going to talk about that. I do want to do Oscar talk for it because, like I said, coming into this, I did not expect it to be Oscar uh, Oscar worthy, and it ends up. Yeah, it, I really wish happen. you. I really wish you had seen this with the crowd because, man, it was so much fun. And it probably like, would. Some of those things that probably didn't work for me probably would have worked better yeah. in, in a theater. Because I'll tell you, like the opening scene, I was sitting next to a kid, which I normally hate doing at the theater. <laughs> And this kid kept saying, "Hey Barbie, hi Barbie," 
<laughs> and it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. And the kid did it every once in a while during the film would say, Hey, Barney. And I was like, God, that's funny. You know, I was with my wife and some other women and they love the Indigo Girls. So every time they sang the Closer to Fine song, they love that. So like, right. and just hearing young people, especially girls, laugh at some of these jokes for the first time, man. It just, it was one of the best uh, it was just the best experience of being in the theater I've had this year, for yeah. sure. Uh, again, you know, talking about things that make this movie become something. One, talk about the Kens introducing the patriarchy, having Ken take that back yeah. to Barbie Land, having him, you know, put this and try to like completely flip the dynamics of what Barbie Land was all about. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing that makes this movie that takes this movie from one level to the next is what you were talking about a second ago: the use of America Ferrera and Ariana Greenblatt in this in this film, uh, who played uh, was America Ferrera, Gloria and Sasha. Yeah, Gloria and Sasha. That is another thing that just kind of allows this film to elevate itself from just again a fluffy movie to something that's a little bit more meaningful, a little bit more impactful. Yeah, because Greenblatt's character, Ariana Greenblatt's Sasha. She is doing what, you know, a lot of people in today's society, and a lot of girls in today's society, they are they don't necessarily, you know, deal out with Barbie. My daughter has played with some Barbie. She's had some Barbie dolls, but she, Barbie has never been one of, like, her favorite toys. Uh, yeah. You know, she's 11 years old. Uh, and like I said, she had some, but she didn't have a whole bunch of them. And, like, the girls that whenever she would take her to a birthday party, they, they don't have a whole lot of Barbie stuff because... Again, it's Barbie's in a bit of a difficult stage, and Greenblatt's character Sasha does a really good. They do a really good job of kind of putting Barbie in her place in the twenty first century because, yeah, she, yeah, she's trying. She's trying to say you can do anything, but she's also perpetuating. That was the word I was looking for earlier. Perpetuating, yeah. uh, perpetually perpetuating bad stereotypes about you know what you're supposed to look like and how you're supposed to look, and, you know how you're supposed to compose yourself. So those are the things that we struggle with the girls that with today who struggle with Barbie and they really do a good yeah. job. And Greenblatt, look, we talked about her when we talked about Ahsoka because she's in yeah. easily the best episode of Ahsoka, uh, in episode five. Uh, and she's just absolutely phenomenal in that. Uh, she's got a quick part in, uh, infinity war and in game, uh, where she plays young Gamora. She's fantastic. And that this girl is going to be a star at some point. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. She was quite a surprise in this. Yeah, and look, I haven't seen America Ferrera in forever. I don't know what the last thing I saw her well, in. She was on, I didn't watch that Superstore show on NBC. I didn't watch it She's been on that for several years. I watched yeah. it, okay. Uh, yeah. But to get her back and to get her in this just it was really, yeah. was wonderful because. Yeah, she was really good. Because the weird Barbie, who played, was, who played weird Barbie? Kate uh, McKinnon, she was very funny. Okay, yeah, I couldn't tell who that was. And it, it's, IMDb is not just real helpful for this movie because everybody's listed as Barbie. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't really help a whole lot. Uh, but, because uh, when Kate McKinnon tells her, uh, Kate McKinnon's weird Barbie tells her she has to go to the real world and she has to, uh, you know, focus in on, on who's playing with her, she's getting these memories, she's getting these flashbacks, and she sees Ari Gr Greenblatt's character as a child, but what she doesn't realize is that it's her mother that is uh, yeah. giving her these memories. She's the one that's causing uh, Barbie to feel these things that she's not used to feeling. And, America and, and the mother doesn't want, she doesn't want to give up the Barbie. Yeah, she doesn't want to give it up. And, uh, you know, her daughter is ready to, it was more than welcome to uh, just kind of put it off to the side. So, uh, I love like when they finally get back to to Barbie Land and the Kens have taken over and they're trying to turn Barbie Land uh, basically I guess into Ken Land I guess is what they would yeah. end up doing it. Uh, but one, it shows the action. It just kind of shows that again, it's it's critical of the doll of Barbie as well as just critical of sometimes of society because we sometimes get so self focused. Like because Barbie at you know, Ken just wants Barbie's attention. That's all he wants. He just wants yeah. Barbie to notice him. Uh, that's that's his whole goal in life, and that's what he's created for is, as a toy. Is he's there to compliment Barbie, and so whenever he, when she tells him every night, you know, uh, every night is girls' night. Uh, she doesn't understand like the pain that she's inflicting on him because she's just looking at right. herself and she's happy. And you know, if she's happy, why should she worry about anything else? And the fact that Ryan Gosling as Ken is really uh, kind of throwing this back in her face is just like, again, it elevates the film to something I did not expect it to be. Yeah. And I love how the women 
get the power back by tricking these dumb guys by being yes. dumb guys. And look, give a lot of credit to all of the people who play Ken. Uh, C. Malou, Kingsley Benadir, uh, Scott yeah. Evans, John Cena has a couple of cameos as yeah, Ken. Yeah, that was hilarious. Uh, like I said, they, they do a great job of pulling this off as just being these dumb uh, these dumb jock dudes for the most part. Yeah. Uh, and credit to all the people playing Barbie. Uh, I didn't realize just the, some, some of the people I didn't recognize because of the way they dressed them. Uh, but you've got Issa Rae, who was the president of Barbie. I didn't oh, realize that she was, was so funny. That scene where uh, Simu Lou wanted to be a, a judge is like, why well, about secondary judge? And we're gonna get, yeah, yeah, we're going to get that in a second, so I want to come back to that. Uh, Harry Neff, uh, I've seen her in a bunch of things. I can't think of uh, uh, something we Emma, we've come, yeah. Uh, yeah, she looks somewhat familiar. I thought we Emma we... Mackey is from Knives Out. And yeah, from she's from Knives Education. Out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sharon Rooney is uh, the larger Barbie. I'm glad they put her in. Yeah. I don't. I didn't expect them to do that, but I'm glad that they, yeah, they, they did. The Barbies were very funny. Dua Lipa is the mermaid. Oh yeah, Dua Lipa. I forgot she was in this as well. Uh, but yeah, she's the mermaid Barbie, and she's her her uh, her, her partner was John Cena. Uh, like yeah. I said, so that that was all great. But the fact that they are using like these stereotypes and look some people like said well you know i've never had a man do this to me i've never had a man try to like explain godfather to me that's if you want to be literal about this yeah you can be yeah i've never explained godfather to a woman i never sat down and tried to explain godfather to a woman but the point is you know that's the whole it's just getting into like mansplaining in general that's what they're trying to that's what they're trying to I did this recently. Oh, did uh, <laughs> wasn't the Godfather. We watched Cool Hand Luke, and my wife didn't get it. And I was like, what are you saying? He, this is a man being held down. Like, I did this scene. But yeah, like I said, I haven't done, I haven't done with this. I'm sure I've done it. Oh, the sports stuff. Oh, the sports uh-huh. stuff, yeah. And I try my best, like, because my wife, this is what, like, where my wife and I are on different pages. She doesn't watch sports. She doesn't watch a lot of TV and movies that I do. And so, like, whenever she asks something, I, like, I get really hesitant about, like, trying to, like, even explain this because, like, I, I don't know what you already know. I don't want to, yeah, like, yeah. say, like, I don't want to talk to you like you're dumb about this. So, like, I hate it when she asks me to explain something for her uh, about, I'm like, I, I, okay, what do you know? So, I don't want to be that guy. But. Uh, well, let's talk about another thing. Like men fighting over a woman. Like this stuff happens a lot growing oh, yeah. up. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah. So, like, and the Ken, the the Ken. I'm just Ken song. Oh my god, that was so funny. Oh yeah, it was the absolutely dance. hilarious. Oh the, yeah, the, like I said, the, they they took this in places that I did not expect them. The Ken dance, uh, the Ken song. Uh, it's it was really really good and the fact that they there's a little bit of pinocchio with this especially when they get to the end where bar yeah barbie land has been saved they've got barbie back uh you know the barbies are back kind of doing what they're supposed to kind of being an opposite mirror of society uh but barbie still doesn't she's still not happy she still doesn't know what she wants she doesn't know what she wants in life and she just and so she decides to be real uh by and like it's great that like i didn't know what uh, raya perlman's character was uh when when we first meet her about halfway through the film like like what are we doing here because i was really really struggling with that yeah uh and when they tell us at the end that she's playing the creator of this and that's that's what her role in this film is i was like oh okay well this makes sense and uh that moment there at the end where she's talking to barbie and they're kind of going through and she's kind of explaining you know i created you to to be whatever you wanted to be and you know she decides to go to the real world i thought she was going to a job and she she ends up i I, I did too i watched it again and i forgot about where she was going and i laughed (laughs) and and she's going to a gynecologist appointment like oh okay that's what they're doing on this so uh look See, were, that's the kind of satire that's just fun yeah it's good it's really really good it's really really fun so um let's talk oscars a little bit because like i said coming in this film okay. when i heard there was gonna be a barbie film i never ever would have expected there to be like oscar talk for it uh look it's probably going to get a best picture nomination it's not going oh, to win I think so. it's not yeah, going, i don't it, think it'll win it's not going to win but it'll probably get a best picture nomination um where I think it can win, I think it can win for screenwriting. Uh, yeah, uh, it would be adapted. cinematography. Yeah, it would be all adapted. The, all the all the all all yeah, I would say screenwriting. Yeah, uh, it could win there. I'm not sure that it will, but it could win there because it'll go for adapted because it's based off of it's based off of uh, a toy, so it's going to be adapted screenplay. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, look, the song uh, "I'm Just Ken" that could easily win. 
that sh- that has to be nominated and be a serious contender. Yeah, I would expect it to be in the running for and easily could easily win that one. Um, acting, uh, maybe Margot Robbie, maybe Ryan Gosling. Margot, I would say both. You think so? I, I, I'm I not. Do. I'm not convinced. Like, look, they're great performances, but I just Ryan Gosling is. Go- if he goes, as he's going to. If he, supporting if he goes actor, to supporting, I mean, yes. Mm-hmm. My, I think he has a- my fear is that there's going to be a lot of people who are going to try to put him as the best lead yeah. actor. That's in the I, I would be shocked if both of them are not nominated. Shocked. Yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll be I really think America Ferrer could be nominated as the best supporting she actress. She could be. It's, it's a possibility. Uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if that's the case. Uh, Greta Gerwig's probably going to get a Best Director nomination. Uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, there's going to be costume design and stuff. Like, it's yeah, all, be- the, all, the, all the secondary awards. Uh, it, it, Probably will win a few of those. Yeah, probably will. So, like I said, I think it should be uh, up for best picture. Oh yeah, I think it definitely should. It's not like I said, it's not going to win. It, it's still no, it's no, not my favorite. It's not my favorite film. I, there's a film Oppenheimer, the one it came out with. Look, it's still my pick for best film of the year. So, uh, but that's just me personally. So. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's going to get, it's got some Oscar buzz, uh, which I never would have expected coming from a war movie coming into this yeah. thing. So, uh, but kudos to Greta Gerwig and the rest of the crew and Margot Robbie and everybody else. Yeah. Uh, and it was really funny. Yeah, it was, it was, it was really, really funny. I was, uh, it, it made me laugh quite a bit and I had to make sure that, uh, you know, I didn't wake up my, my wife because when she would hear me laugh, because I was watching it so late yeah. at night. So yeah, I, I want you to watch this with your wife and daughter and come and tell us how that goes. Cause I, I, I want to hear their reaction. Action. I, I think they're going to absolutely love it. Yeah, I'm not sure about my daughter because, like I said, she's never really been interested in Barbie too much. So I don't know. If, uh, but my, my wife, you know, she grew up with Barbie. She had a ton of Barbies yeah. growing up. Uh, so, yeah, uh, my niece, who's around the same age, I don't think she really had Barbies and she loved it. Yeah, so like I said, we'll we'll see. But I, I feel like she would. My wife would really love it. My daughter might, but not 100 percent positive. So, all right. Uh, anything else you want to add before we do our well, awards? You, on it? I mentioned the Issa Rae, the Judge joke. Oh yeah, yeah. Said, uh, yeah, uh, it's what I like about that is the fact that they are, even the Barbies are kind of like growing in this thing, uh, because yeah. like they're doing like they're, they recognize that the Kins want to be more than just, you know, just there. They want they right. want a little bit more than just being just, just Ken. I mean, for uh, yeah. to go into this. So, cause like, so they're giving them out the opportunity. So just like women in our world, you know, they don't have a, they don't have as many opportunities. They don't have, it's yeah. tougher for them to find those things. They're, they're still, they're still making some progress. I mean, there's still progress being made with them. So, I mean, we right. do, they do have some women on the Supreme court justice. Now, uh, they have had, you know, we have a woman vice president, so there are steps being made, but they still have a long way to go in right, terms right. of we, as a society, of getting women close to what we actually want in terms of being equal. And like I said, they're mirroring that in the Barbie land, so yeah, they're not and going to, and, and using satire, which yeah, really helps, and it does, it helps it a whole lot. So, uh, like I said, uh, I thought that was really interesting when they did that to the end. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I was fascinated by the film. I really, really was. Uh, just was the fact they did some of the things they did with it. So. All right, shall we do our awards for it? Yeah, let's do it. All right, up here on the Main Attraction Podcast, uh, whenever we are covering a movie or television show, we like to give six awards based on the six characters of Friends. Up first is the Rachel, the star of the show. I think this is obvious, but who is your star for uh, Barbie? Margot Robbie as Barbie. No, I didn't realize how much she did to get this movie made, to get Greta Gerwig involved, and to produce it and to be involved with the script. She deserves so much praise. Yeah, she really does. She was great in this film. It's, uh, and she's just, man, she's one of our great superstars, Like especially younger. Oh, yeah. She kills everything she's in. She is unbelievable. Yeah, she, talented she really she is. is. Yeah, I look, uh, the... The thing I'm most familiar with her is is her rendition of um, Harley Quinn. Uh, that's so, yeah. that's what I'm most familiar with her. But she's done a lot of other stuff. She's really yeah. she's good in a, in a lot of it. But she's great Harley yeah. Quinn. She really is. Yeah. Uh, next is the Joey. Who is your Joey? The character that's just fun. You just like a lot. I went with the other variations of Barbie and Ken, like like we okay. talked about, King Ben Air, Sumo Lou, uh, Issa Rae, Alexander Shipp, Emma Mackey, all the other ones. I thought. Like you mentioned earlier, 
both those variations who I didn't realize all of these people were going to be in this movie. They right. brought so much to it and just being, they weren't just background. They, they actually were involved in the, in, into the process. So I, I really enjoyed all those performances. So the other Ken's and Barbies, uh, I went with, uh, America Ferreira as Gloria. Uh, she was I my, got her somewhere else. Yeah. She uh, was, she was my Joey. I, I really liked her a lot. So the, that's yeah, where I put her. Great. Uh, your channel, the person who made you laugh the most. I had two people Gosling as Ken, and Michael Sarah as Alan. Oh yeah, he was great. Was we didn't, we, didn't just, talk much we had brought about yeah. Alan was really really funny. Alan was really really funny. I, I, he was absolutely phenomenal. Again, I'm not familiar with Barbies, but apparently Alan is was a yeah. real Barbie doll that was supposed to be kind of like Ken. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, and it was just it was great. He was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, my Chandler, I went with just all the Kins, uh, specifically uh, led by Ryan Gosling because they were yeah. they were quite funny. Uh, they were absolutely hilarious. Uh, and Ryan Gosling is fantastic in this. Uh, he is. He's he, so good at comedy. Yeah, he really is, and you don't really think of him as, as a comedic actor, uh, but, he, but he's he's really good at it. So, uh, the Phoebe, the oddball of the bunch. Who's your Phoebe? I went with Kate McKinnon as uh, Weird Barbie. Yeah, that's uh, I, I was going to go ahead I can throw her in here, but I thought it was pretty obvious. So uh, I just went with Barbie Land, just uh, the fact that it's this yeah. land made of Barbie toys. Uh, you know, the dream house, the yeah. dream car, uh, all those different things. I thought that was yeah, just... Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it yeah. was absolutely fun. It was weird, but it was fun. Uh, the Monica, person who's just important to the story. Who is your Monica? I went with uh, Ariana Greenblatt as Sasha and yes. America Ferrera as Gloria. Okay, this is where I put America Green, uh, Ariana Greenblatt here. So, uh, but I had America Ferrera somewhere else. But yeah, yeah. Uh, look, they're great together. Uh, so I can see why. He yeah, they really together. were really good. Uh, like I said, look, Ariana Greenblatt's going to be a star. I don't know what all she oh, has yeah. planned, but she's going to be a star. So I think she's like eighteen now, isn't she? Or something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, the Ross, your least favorite character. Who's your Ross? I went with Mattel and yeah. Will Ferrell. Yeah. yeah the, they, Will Ferrell was so good in this. And it was like, when I saw that he was the villain, I was like, oh, man. Because really, there's only two people that could have been the villain. They were Will Ferrell or Melissa McCarthy had to be. Somebody, you know, with the way they act. Right. Like the, their their type of comedy. And Will Ferrell was the perfect person to play this. Yeah. I went with Mattel ex- execs as well, uh, specifically led by, by Will Ferrell. But, yeah. Yeah. They and look they don't even make them as just really unlikable i mean they just make no. them just they're just more like clueless more than anything else yeah. uh is, yeah. is how they is how they present them but uh and, and they're great i mean specifically will ferrell like i said i didn't even realize he yeah. was in this and right they i think they did a really good job of keeping that and kind of the lid on that they did and let me shout out because a lot of people don't think will ferrell and kate mckinnon can can like rub people the wrong way and not be funny. They were both hilarious. Greta Gerwig right. used them both perfectly. Oh yeah, she really did. She, she was she did a great job with them. So, all right, rating time here on the Main Attraction Podcast. Uh, on our podcast, we have a five tier rating system. At the top of our list is a Succession. Uh, beneath the Succession is a Lost. Middle of the Road Forest is a Friends. Beneath the Friends is a uh, Full House, and Bottom of the Barrel Forest is a Baywatch. What are you rating the movie Barbie? Oh man, this this is a succession. I had so much fun in the theater watching this, and I thought it was one of the best movies of the year. I watch it again at home and enjoyed it just as much. It, th- this is one of the best movies of the year. There's no doubt. Yeah, it's a succession. It's a really good movie. Uh, it's not my favorite film of the year, but it's really really good. Uh, it, it'll definitely be in contention for four best movies of the year. But uh, there's a few that I like. There's still a few that I like a little bit better, but uh, it's still great. It's still really, really good. I look, I do want to watch it, especially with my wife, hopefully with my daughter. Uh, but she hasn't had a chance to do that just yet. So, all right. So that wraps up our coverage. Of Barbie, like I said, just four months late. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's do some recommendations before we sign off for this. Uh, what are some things you want to recommend? Uh, Oh, I will recommend if Barbie comes back to the theater, go to the theater and watch this. I'm sure they'll do a release of it or something. Yeah, some point. I would, I would, I would recommend this. If you're watching this at home, wait till it comes back to the theater and go see it. Uh, I have a couple of things. Uh, the Haunting of Venice, the um, Kenneth so Branagh, the oh, Kenneth Branagh yeah, yeah, yeah. Perot. It's on Hulu. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, and I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. I need to watch that. I, I think I, I, I like enjoyed it. I, yeah, I like it too, and I think I enjoyed it uh, more than the um, 
than the previous uh, Perot movie. Yeah, I haven't seen the previous one. I saw the first one. I haven't seen the previous yeah. one. Uh, Death on the Nile or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, also Pain Hustlers, the movie uh, uh, about the opioid crisis starring Emily Blunt and Chris Evans on Netflix. Mm. I watched it as well. I enjoyed okay. it. I thought it was uh, thought it was pretty good. And then on Amazon Prime, uh, the... Robert De Niro, Sebastian Maniscalco, the comedian movie about my father. It's kind of like Meet the Parents, which also had Robert De Niro in it. <laughs> but uh, it's funny. It's enjoyable. It's an hour and a half. I don't think you will regret watching it. So about my father on uh, Amazon Prime. All right. Uh, so for me, from my recommendations, what do I got? I just lost them. All right. There we go. Uh, first one is definitely a... Uh, let me just kind of give some caveats to it. This is not going to be for everyone, uh, but I did watch Asteroid City. It's on... I need to watch that. It's, it's on, on Peacock. Peacock. Yeah, it's on Peacock. It's it's really, really good. I enjoyed it a lot. It is not going to be for everyone, though. Uh, one, it's Wes Anderson. Uh, you either like Wes Anderson... Well... <sighs> I'm not, let me not say that way because there are some things about Wes Anderson I really like, and there are some things I really don't like. I did not really like the French well, Connection. Is, I could this not. This is make a it really through. weird, really weird Wes Anderson. As well. Yeah, it is, uh, and like it borders on like being a little bit too weird for me, even at times. But yeah, this is probably his most thoughtful film that he's ever done. Uh, he he normally like Wes Anderson films. I mean, he normally has something to say, but he he normally kind of makes it like he just lays it out there pretty clear and like just kind of states it plainly for you he doesn't do it yeah. so much with this one uh and it's a little you really have to think and you really it's really introspective it's very much a movie that you've got to constantly just you know be thinking about and when you it leaves you thinking about it uh, as you go away from it uh like i said it is not for everyone though i will say that if you if you don't like if, if you struggle with wes anderson stuff uh if you struggle with films that you know don't just come out because like I went back and like read like five different reviews of it to see what other people thought of it, and I just went and like everybody had like a different like had a different takeaway of just yeah. what they thought it meant. So like, uh, it like I said, it's not just real cut cut and clear dry about just what you know he's trying to say in this. So it was, it's not going to be for everyone, but I really really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I'm really glad that I watched it. Um, Next, uh, we haven't talked about it too much, but they have started season four uh, for All Mankind on Apple TV Plus. I watched the first three episodes that they have released. I did as well. It's. I feel like they have a really good chance of getting back to what like the first two seasons uh, were. Thought the same too. Thought the, thought the same thing. They have dropped the Danny character. Oh yeah, they did. Uh, like I don't even know what ha uh, it appears like he killed himself or something. Like they haven't really said. Uh, I don't know, but they knew it, that was a mess. Yeah, it was. It's smart because he was just absolutely weighing down that show in, in episode yeah. three, in season three. So, uh, I like I said I'll be. I don't. Um, I'm guessing they're going to reveal at some point what happened to him. But um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, losing him in this has just been phenomenal. It's just it just completely weighed down that show. Yeah. Uh, and what they're I doing, I really like the characters they added to this year. Yeah, they they added a couple of new characters that are doing some interesting things in this. Uh, I love what they're doing with Margo over in uh, the Soviet yeah. Union. Uh, it's just really really good. Uh, and I don't know if we're going to see President Wilson because she's not president anymore, obviously. Yeah. But they they've only mentioned her. They haven't actually had her on the screen. Any, so I'll be interested to see if they actually keep her on in the show at some point because she hasn't shown up yet but uh if, if you so because she was a great character yeah she was she was a really good character if you like the first three seasons of uh especially the first two seasons of for all mankind i really like I said it look it's only the first three episodes and it still has a long way to go but it feels like this could be they, they could have found kind of yeah. their magic of the first two seasons so all right uh i guess that wraps us up for uh barbie anything else you want to add for yourself yeah uh I forgot what I was going to say. I forgot my catchphrase. Oh, appreciate everyone <laughs> joining us, and we will talk to you next time. <laughs> I've echo... always said it 200 <laughs> times. That's right. Uh, I would echo those same sentiments. And as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true.